Okay, um, episode 13 of uh, New York City Bike Culture. Today with, I didn't even ask him how to pronounce his name because I know that there is a Belarusian version and he has a shortened version, which I think <laughs> makes it easier for people in the US to pronounce. But it's still confusing because it's kind of a German for me. So I I, I should say Alex Koch, but I think uh, Kochatau, or how do you say it in the full name in uh, Belarusian? Yeah, my last name was translated from language to language uh, several yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, original it was Koch. Okay, it was Koch originally. Right. But long, then long they time made ago. it sound like a Russian, uh, and uh, then they translated to Belarusian. Belarusian. And yeah. then from Belarusian, they phonetically translated to English. Yeah, from so Cyrillic to Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I just came to the United States, <laughs> it took a while for me even to learn how to spell my first and last name. <laughs> the first and last name, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a very common immigrant experience, right? You come here and then your name kind of gets. There's lots of stories of that. And I know my name, I don't pronounce my name the German way, right? It's a right. slight variation, it, it, but it sounds, it's more or less the same. I spell the same way at least. Right. So, uh, how, how would you like to introduce yourself, Alex? Uh, I think it's just easier for everyone to call me Alex Koch. Yeah, Koch. Like, okay. Koch that's what I usually say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, like there's a from, former mayor, I think, here, right? right yeah, right, right. exactly. So, I'm happy, really happy to talk to Alex today. Um, we've already had a good conversation. Um, he is, I think, currently mostly known as a race promoter, but you are, um, are slash were a bike rider and racer, especially too, right? And you also lead um, the Verrazano uh, Cycling Team Store, correct? Right. Um, which is, um, you can recognize them pretty stand out to stands out, stands out quite a bit the kit it's uh, kind of a bright uh, yellow and blue uh, and you see them i think all over the city really but out of yeah. brooklyn originally and you are out of brooklyn. right so he's out of brooklyn um he works for the city and tech uh and um what else do we need to know about you? Tell us a little bit more. You're originally from uh, Belarus, or yes. slash born in the Soviet Union back in the day. Yeah, I was born in Soviet Union, uh, but uh, that part of Soviet Union now became Belarus. And, yeah. Um, 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 my childhood uh, was uh, quite great, and uh, then uh, when Soviet Union uh, was uh, broken down, um, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, borders raised between the parts of Soviet Union yeah. and uh, economy collapsed because uh, uh, all the factories couldn't uh, transfer anything over the border easily like they used to be. Yeah. Everything like used to be able to. Uh, yeah. very, very, you know, and uh, it was very tough time. I remember myself uh, um, that after the school, I had to rush to the park to keep the empty bottles uh, from beer and stuff like this uh, just to get uh, enough money for bread uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because my mother uh, used to um, uh, work in a hospital mm -hmm. and uh, she was uh, uh, making uh, enough money for uh, two loaves of uh, the cheapest dry bread yeah. and two, lo uh, and two uh, liters of milk yeah. a month yeah so it was very tough time this was as a hospital worker yeah 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 so that's that's uh that's pretty crazy to think so um, so you, you made it here at some point um yeah par partially for, because, for forced by the economic situation in belarus or um no actually you know i um i had uh, um after that, uh, my mother managed to put me in the military, so uh, okay. yeah. that way it uh, helped her because, you know, even for herself, it was uh, very hard to survive on that money. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in the military, at least I was able to get some food there. Yeah, yeah. So, you get food, you get a salary, right, right, even though it's not much probably, but you get a place to sleep, right? All yeah. that, yeah. So, um, and... Um, I ended up uh, studying uh, to be a military doctor. Okay, yeah. I didn't finish just one year. Okay. But um, um, it's not really my field because, you know, uh, my mother is a very like, powerful woman and mm -hmm. uh, she forced me to uh, go yeah, in yeah, that yeah. direction, you know. Yeah. But um, I think I'm very sensitive person in terms of um, uh, hurt someone or make mistake and hurt someone yeah. You know? yeah so it's a very big responsibility uh, to be a doctor yeah um, 
as I see these days, uh, not many doctors realize that uh, how high responsibility it is. Yeah. Because you know, I've been fixing computers, uh, and uh, when you uh, break a computer part, you can replace it. Yeah, it will cost you money, but uh, it's, it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, when somebody's life is gone, you can't really do anything about it. You know? yeah. So that's why, you know, responsibility was, uh, I think, the main uh, barrier um, to be a doctor. Yeah. And um, uh, since it's, it wasn't my field and since uh, I was in the military and uh, I had um, a very tough situation with uh, my mother, because she was uh, micromanaging me. Yeah. She was uh, controlling me totally crazy. I was trying to like um, move to a different, completely opposite side of the city, and she still found me. Yeah. So um, it uh, happened that uh, right before that, uh, 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 Gulash, yeah. No, actually, Gulash, yes. Yeah. Sorry. I wear some similar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, um, uh, my father was uh, dreaming to go to the United States. He's been saying that, uh, you yeah. know, United States uh, such a great country, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Um, um, and he was applying for green card. Mm. Every was, year or just once? Yeah, he was uh, applying every year, but every yeah. year uh, when he was applying, uh, it uh, never really uh, came up yeah. because, um, you know, it's, it's like... a lottery, right? Like, was it a lottery back then already? Uh, no? Yeah, but you know, even before they put you in the lottery, they always uh, uh, check in who yeah. you are. Yeah, they screen you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you worth anything or not, because uh, what's the point to bring people to the United States if they won't bring anything to economy? Yeah, I, I don't know what the what the regulations were back then, but right. I know there's obviously like ability based visas now, and then right, there's right, like the right. visa lottery, which is random. Like right, yeah, anybody right. can apply, but yeah, yeah. So I was like, uh, look, uh, you're an older man, and uh, um, yeah, you have a. Uh, quite good education but your education in electronics uh, yeah. is outdated yeah because right. you know you didn't work in that field for already 15 years and, yeah. uh, so I was like why do they need you yeah is it was like no it's a lottery I was like okay yeah since it's a lottery yeah you don't believe me I was like apply for a green card on my name so he applied on my name just once, yeah. and green card came immediately. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, could, could be chance, but you, you don't believe in uh, you don't believe in uh, probability there. You believe in probability. So yeah, yeah. So you know, and uh, I had that green card. You know, I was quite comfortable uh, in my country because mm -hmm. uh, by 2005, when I came to the United States. Okay, so this is not um, this is not that. Yeah, it, it was you only lived like years. 15 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union. So right, you, right, like, right. Yeah, you were you were an adult at that point. Yeah, 2005. Yes. Um, you eventually get a job at the city, and you get into bike riding. I'm assuming that wasn't a thing you did in, in Belarus. You knew how to ride a bike, um, but you weren't like into it as a sport or a hobby. I'm assuming. The thing is that uh, I start. Um, Looking into like uh, uh, riding bicycle more and uh, more like um, uh, competitive cycling and stuff like this in Belarus of, in the year of 2000. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but um, you know, I seen those uh, guys in the, the cycling kids and the uh, great bikes and stuff like this passing by and going for training and stuff. Okay, and, uh, yeah. I was like, oh, I, I wish I could do the same thing, but okay. back then I was... Uh, so these were like kids who were on a team or something like that, or yeah. Right, but uh, I was already 18 at that point, and um, at age 18 it's not really a good age to start a professional sport, you know? No, no, yeah. It's already too late. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Plus, that should be a good reminder for a lot of amateur athletes, actually. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's possible, but it's pretty unlikely. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, I went to the coach and he said, look, you're too old. Yeah. 
I have no interest in it. Okay. So it was kind of rough like, uh, answer, you know, but... <laughs> I, I would imagine that's the way things were in Belarus, yeah? Or still are, um, maybe. A little bit more than in the US, perhaps. You get a straight straight answer? Or was that unusual even then no, for you? That was unusual, but I think it was because uh, he is uh, ex-police. Uh, uh, so, okay. you know... More direct. <laughs> right. Okay. And... Um, uh, you know, uh, I was like, okay, I, I don't need to race, but I, at least I can come out with those guys yeah, and try to get the learn. train and yeah, stuff like yeah. this. So when my mother saw me in uh, uh, cycling shorts, she said that I look like a gay in the word yeah, bad word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the word bad yeah. word. Let, let's not use a, let's not, right, it's right, a translation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty much it about bicycle yeah <laughs> so yeah. i was still riding bicycle but uh, i was riding bicycle and uh, um as much as i could but don't forget that uh, uh i was already in the military at that point yeah so. yeah. yeah and um i was gonna say you got, you got other things going on in life you were worried about other things you you talked about finances and again even you know if you just wipe even in, in belarus i'm sure Getting a bike, or I don't know if they provide a bike. Yeah, help yourself. Sorry, I'm like keep eating. I'm sure that was money and all that. So, so you got into cycling in the early 2000s, um, or at least had had a first kind of experience with it. Um, first back in the family, I would say, and then um, you kept riding until you you went to the U.S. Or uh, yeah, I've been riding um, mostly on the weekends and uh, on uh, uh, my vacation. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the rest of the time, well, you know, in the military, yeah, where, yeah. where are you going to ride it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to keep your bike there in the locker or something right. like that, right, yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, we had some, um, when I was starting to be a military doctor, we had a uh, practice uh, in uh, Borisov, uh, which is not far away from Minsk, okay. uh, on the military base, and I brought my bicycle over there, so when, uh, after uh, our studies and stuff like this, uh, okay. uh, uh, I've been uh, sometimes uh, going to the reason itself on a bicycle, okay. which is like, I think, eight, mi eight kilometers or something okay. like that. Yeah. Very yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, five miles, yeah. But, you know, it was something so, like, so unusual for that uh, Yeah, place. everybody was looking at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But you were like the alien kind of. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, even right now, I'm going to work uh, 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 to the city job, and yeah. uh, I ride bicycle. Yeah. And, uh, can you imagine, you go to some department, uh, yeah. and everyone is like, uh, <laughs> and I'm the bicycle kid. Hey yeah. guys! Hey guys, <laughs> you come in, you got your gear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You bring the bike in too, or do you yes, park yes, it outside yes. the building? Yes, I put it in the garage. Yeah, yeah. you say it. Okay, you have it in the garage spot. Perfect, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. which is always the question in New York City. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, 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 you kept that up actually, and then you came to the US, and I'm sure you had other things to worry about first, or uh, what was uh, it like? I think uh, one of the first uh, uh, questions I had to worry about that uh, uh, transportation. Yeah. Because, you know, um, the way how I came uh, to, United, to the United States, it was very spontaneous. I had a very bad conflict with my mother, and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, since I had that green card uh, somewhere in the corner, uh, on the bottom of the pile of uh, papers and stuff oh, like this. Oh, you had it? Or oh, you hadn't like, it was already ready to go and everything? Or, uh... Yeah, it was ready to go, but uh, I didn't uh, even uh, want to go to the United States and yeah. stuff like this, because I was comfortable in my country, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, economy is back to normal, yeah. uh, lifestyle is normal, like yeah. literally. I think it's similar to the United States right now, we're here, so it's like, uh, what's the point to change from yeah, one you're happy, to right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even despite some people are whining, like, oh, my salary is much lower than the United States, but, you know, prices for everything in the United States are much higher, so at the end of the day, it's the same thing. <laughs> no, I, I, I hear you, I hear you on that, I think, um, surely, I mean, even, even in even comparing the U.S. like rural regions to New York City, right? It's like, yeah, sure, I make my more money here, but I also can't afford a house here because it's so expensive, right? right. So that kind of question, you know, like you don't have to rent, and the rent is super high. So right. are you really making more money? You know. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. And uh, you know, uh, I just grabbed my green card uh, and 
escape from the country um, in order to uh, get to the United States. I had to uh, first go to embassy in uh, Poland because um, I believe at that point uh, uh, embassy in uh, Belarus uh, wasn't functioning right. Because you know, it's always been kind of tensions between Russia and the uh, United States. Yeah, so and, and, and Belarus is of the former Soviet states, probably closer to Russia, more closely allowed than uh, um, others, probably, right? You can say that it's a part of Russia still, because we never <laughs> had a border. Yeah. Like, literally, when you pass on the, on the train, in the There's bar no or anything, or anything. you don't even know uh, that you're crossing the border. No other border than sign, Welcome to Belarus, yeah, 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 or welcome yeah, yeah, to yeah. Russia. Okay. That's it. It's very different um, than what you read, for example, about Ukraine, right? Like, right, where, right, where right, there's right, a very right. uh, still ongoing tensions and war going on, depending on what you want to call it. But, but back to that. So, you had to go to Poland because, I mean, you said escape, but, but you decided to leave at that point for personal reasons. Right, 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 right. Economic yeah. reasons, I No, no. Right. I was totally fine uh, in that way. And um, I um, uh, got my green card, and uh, when I was about to buy uh, airplane tickets, they asked me, where do you want to go? I was like, oh, what cities I even know there? <laughs> That's a good story. Okay, so you were at the, you had gotten your green card fixed, and you were at the airport, and you're like, I want to go to the United States. And they're like, right. oh, where do you want to go? Okay. Yeah, I had no idea. And, uh, the only city came up first in my mind it was New York. I, I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably most everybody's first response. Yeah, yeah. Right, because you know, I, I uh, grew up in a big city. It's so, uh, um, big in terms of Belarus because you know, it's uh, two million it's people. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm used to big city. I used to live uh, in a uh, middle or in the center of the city, so I'm used to a lot of people around, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So when I came to the United States, I literally had only fifty dollars in my pocket, and I didn't know anyone. Yeah. Wow. So um, on my way to Poland in the train, I met with one guy, and he said, "Oh, I have a friend." Uh, he lives in Brooklyn. I don't know how far it is from New York, uh, from New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can give you his uh, phone number and address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully he will help you since he's in such situation. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So, um, airplane. I think uh, landed uh, very late, uh, and you know, from the airplane, the airport is uh, so cold. August, you know so cold inside uh, the uh, airport oh, okay yeah 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 and i'm you thinking walk like out. oh probably climate here is cold <laughs> i have no idea right so i put a sweater on because i was cold yeah. and the doors open to the street i was like holy high humidity that's like a yeah. sauna you know yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. so yeah. humid i was yeah. like wow and um I was like, okay. <laughs> First, it was very really hard to even uh, start breathing in because I didn't expect to <laughs> to go to Russian banya. <laughs> They're not familiar with the banya. It's basically a Russian version of a sauna, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and um, uh, when I um, actually um, uh, came out, I was like, okay, I have 50 bucks. I see yeah. uh, cabs. Yeah. But I need to try to save money somehow, right? Sure. right? right. I have a JFK. I have. There's no way to get out of there, right? Address yeah. of unknown guy. Yeah. Ah, oh, he didn't give me the phone number. He gave me only name and address. That's it. Yeah. And I see that NTA bus, but the uh, NTA bus uh, looks very different from uh, city buses yeah. in my country. Yeah. Yeah. It looks more like a. a uh, coach bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. You know those older yeah, you ones. Sit, you sit higher. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So you think, uh, okay, that's different. different right. Purpose. So I didn't yeah. realize that it's a city bus. You right. Know? Right. So we spoke like, some English, I'm assuming. Uh, a few words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, my English was so bad that I couldn't even uh, find a, a bathroom, uh, a restroom in the airport. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was uh, saying toilet, uh, yeah, yeah, toilet, yeah, toilet but but in the Russian yeah. way, uh, okay. nobody understood it. what was uh, going on, okay. you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was surprised, like, how come that in airport people uh, stop regular stuff in airport doesn't speak the several languages? Because, uh-huh. you know, in my country, when you go to airport, they speak like three, four languages. Yeah. Yep, yep. So we're all language you uh, speak, you just go there, they will give you directions. Yeah. Maybe yeah. on the, bro- the broken English or whatever, but still you got it. Yeah, you get something. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, I spent that uh, all 50 bucks uh, to uh, on the cab. I gave the address, uh, the guy asking uh, something. I have no idea. I was like, this is the address, bring me there. <laughs> so, he for some reason thought it was not GPS back then, you know. Uh, he for some reason thought that uh, it's Bedford Avenue somewhere in Greenpoint. Mm. So he brought me all the way to Greenpoint, and then he was driving back all the way to Belt Parkway. Oh God! Okay. <laughs> so you got a tour of the city, yeah, at least and, of Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. right. And you know when it, uh, when the cab was passing the, like uh, uh, Bed Stuy? Yeah. Back then, 2005, that started a new budget, like right? area, huh? I was yeah, like, uh, before my please, time. not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Things have changed. Yeah, but, right, yeah. right, right, right. But you ended up in Brooklyn. And, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to fast forward. Uh, we should really have an extra on your like, immigrant story here. This is a good one. Um, it, but from this kind of... I feel like this is like a classic immigrant story in some ways, right? Uh, uh, you have an address, you have a contact, and and we can laugh about it now about a lot of this stuff, right? But a lot of it, I mean, at the time was serious, right? And uh, at the at the time was um, probably pretty rough. And we're laughing about it now, which is great because you made it, and um, you're here. You have a job at the city. Um, you just you're working kind of overtime. Um, hopefully, making some good money. You're saying. Rookie night shifts too, uh, which we'll maybe come back to later when you're talking about how you can fit all that in with uh, race promoting. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll let you eat exactly eat a little bit. Um, and it tells a little bit then. So uh, I looked a little bit, and I think you started racing in like 2015, 2016 here, something like that, or 2017, something like that. I actually uh, checked um, at UC Cycling, and I realized that um, my first. Um, Eight races I made in 2014. 14, okay. So you did some racing because um, I think you you stopped racing for health reasons, right? In like 2018 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and as you race, I'm assuming not immediately. You did what I think a lot of people do. You you, you find some people. I'm assuming this is how it happened. When you start a team, uh, Verzano, so the Verzano team, team Verzano team. Um, cycling team again based and affiliate with the Verzano bike shop, right? In um, uh, Bay Ridge in Brooklyn. Um, I think Fifth Avenue or something like that. Um, and um, I think you had, have some good visibility there uh, with the kids, like I said. Um, how did that start? How do you, how do you decide to start that? And um, how, did you, how did you find uh, joining the racing community here, um, especially in the bike riding community? Because I'm assuming. You started started it up again and then bought a road bike at some point and how did all that happen? Yeah, um, uh, as soon as I came to United States, um, I started uh, working uh, on the construction uh, because that's the only uh, place I right. could uh, find right away. Because right. I had no place uh, to stay, had no place uh, yeah, and to qualifications and all I was that. lucky that this guy opened the door. He was mad as hell at 3 o'clock in the morning. Someone was ringing his door. And he had a, a two-year-old kid. Oh boy! Yeah. 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 So uh, I stayed uh, a little bit at uh, uh, his place, but uh, I had to move on because you know right. I can't still sit yeah. at his neck. Yeah. Uh, and from the very first salary, uh, when I got paid, I bought the cheapest bicycle I could find for transportation, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you know it's much easier and simpler on a bicycle around than um, uh, take public transportation. Mm-hmm. Because uh, public transportation, you know, back then it was dollar uh, fifty, And it, it was still uh, big money because, because uh, yeah, yeah. back then uh, right. I think minimal wage was uh, about $6 or something. Wow, time to change quickly. Okay, yeah. Right. 
or was it for sale? To, no, it was for sale. I to came to the U.S. in 2006, and um, I was a college student, so I didn't have to worry about that too much. Like, it's slash, I couldn't actually work outside of campus, so that, that, that wasn't really a, a thing based on uh, visa regulations. But you bought a bike, you got around, so you start working around. Um, and as soon as I could, I start switching to computer repair business because yeah. um, that's uh, exactly what I've been doing uh, uh, before I came to the United States. Mm -hmm. So uh, from a year of 2000, I was studying in a uh, uh, medical university and fixing computers for people on the side mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I didn't want to deal with my mother. So I had to rely everything on, on my own money. You know? Right, right, right. So, um, and uh, to get around to customers' places, uh, the best transportation is the bicycle. So, yeah. uh, literally, I was making up to seven appointments a day on the bicycle. Good, that's very and, good. Yeah. Uh, you know, if uh, you take public transportation maximum, you can make four or five. Yeah. And only if it's uh, inside uh, Manhattan. Right. So this is purely like, I mean, you like bike riding, but this is really a business decision. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, going to uh, customer places in New York City is very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have such problem uh, in Belarus, but over here, uh, I realized that I have to avoid drinking anything eating anything so i became a camel so mm. i was uh waking up eating drinking go to work and for whole day mm -hmm. i didn't yep. eat, eat or drink and then uh, uh only at night when i was coming back after 12 uh, 14 sometimes even 16 hours of work yes please thank you uh i was coming back after riding all day wrong fixing computers and stuff like this with a, uh, a pile of uh, laptops in my backpack I was coming home and uh, I, uh, then I was eating and drinking yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. this. Uh, yeah, it's a camel. Yeah. And it's funny that uh, I was uh, making a uh, beer mountain and back yeah. on one bottle of, of, of water. This is now later when you were getting into right, right, right. like one bottle of water, no food, nothing. Right, right, right. You, know, you had trained your body to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can't train that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, um, yeah. And you know, I did see um, the bicycle uh, racers, or at least uh, uh, people on the bicycle uh, in a, uh, cycling kits, uh, and I was like, oh, those are elites. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. You know, my expectations Thank were you. like, uh, those guys are so great and stuff like this. I can't uh, even think or dream to race uh, with them in the same yeah, race and I stuff think, like this. I think you, you know? get that impression, right? Because a lot of these teams, including ours, like everybody's kind of immaculately dressed, right? And you have the same kid, you look you look professional, but it has that effect of putting people off almost, right? Or confusing people because they think that's too fast for me or too good and uh, it's just serious, right? Yeah. No, you know, actually, uh, I don't think that the kids uh, making a barrier. Uh, compared to cycling community, and bicycle racing community in Belarus, uh -huh. uh, you know, the coach was there mean, right? Yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, yeah. in the same I, time... I would call that like old European style. I mean, I, I think you had that in the US too. There was a different generation of coaches. But right, anyway, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But uh, the regular uh, bicycle racers there, they were very friendly. So okay. when I came to them uh, to the street and start asking questions and mm -hmm. stuff like this, uh, and uh, first before you even start speaking to the person, right? Yeah. You happen his wheel, okay. right? Yeah. And uh, instead of uh, like screaming at me, like get off my wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, they were very friendly. Like, uh, oh, hey, how is it going? Yeah. Uh, what's your name? How long have you been cyclist. riding this? That? Yeah. You know. Okay. It was completely opposite approach here, because here, as soon as you get on on somebody's wheel. They're uh, screaming at you. Yeah, it's, it's a big no-no. Uh, it's still considered a big no-no, kind of, right? I think um, I think there's a variety of probably differences, cultural differences there. I think uh, 
there's always a little bit of skepticism here. Um, maybe there's also just a lot of cyclists here versus uh, in Belarus. So in Belarus, maybe if people were happy to see another cyclist here, oh, you definitely get that reaction of, oh, I'm not worried that there is somebody on the wheel. Like, anyway, um, I, I want to get back to the... Um, so you got, you got the road bike, you got into cycling, and then you did the first race, and uh, eventually... And it was very uh, tough, uh, a very tough job to make me even try to uh, race. Yeah. yeah. And uh, But you, you rode, your, your training was riding around every day, kind of? Yes, yes, yes. Because you see, uh, the way how um, those people uh, came back to me when I uh, meet them on the street, Yeah. Uh, I, I was feeling uh, like uh, something is not right, and mm -hmm. I kind of like uh, was like always pushed out, pushed uh, out, okay, you know. Okay, okay. And uh, my friend uh, 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 Serge uh, Burianenko, uh, he used to race, and he became Cat three, and he mm -hmm. quit racing in uh, 2013 or 14, I think. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he quit, um, I start racing, okay. and. Um, uh, he been trying to push me for like two or three years, like, oh, why don't you try to start racing and yeah. stuff like this? And I was like, oh, I don't know, those guys are so pro and, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, they are not too friendly. I, I, I feel like they are so pro that they don't need to be friendly or something like that. And I was like, uh, I, I don't know if I, if I can even uh, compete with them and stuff like this. Yeah. And, uh, then somehow I was like, okay, bro, I, I will try it. Uh, so I tried at Floyd Bennett Field uh, in 2014, uh, the very first race. I think I was pulling the pack uh, of Cat 5s. Uh, yeah. For like you had the classic race. new thing, you get a new guy, and you pull uh, your around. Everyone yeah. was sitting on my wheel, yeah. and I was like, where are you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I, I yeah. didn't know what I'm doing. Strategy. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard at least three, four people say the same thing about their first race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then on the last uh, lap, uh, <laughs> one guy just uh, came out, and he was like, okay, you did enough job, let me do something. I was like, okay, at least Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I was like, okay, um, that looks fun, and um, uh, I think I made uh, mostly Horace races uh, because um, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Horace Porosporos. Um, not currently, it wasn't a race organized at least last year, um, but it used to organize the United uh, United Roubaix, I think they called it, the Thursday night series at Floyd Bennett Field, and then I think Dash for Cash every July. He's been doing that at least right. uh, for some years. So anyway, so you did Thursday night races at the new schedule. Yeah, and um, you know, it's a small race. Uh, he literally has maybe like uh, 15, uh, 20 people in a Cat 4-5 field yeah. and as much in a Cat 1-3 uh, field. So it, it used to, when it, when it happened, it wasn't as, quite as big as the Tuesday series. But sometimes he had good numbers, sometimes it was smaller, right? It was, it was more up and down kind of, yeah, depending right. on the day, yeah. And uh, I feel that, uh, yeah, I can do that and I felt comfortable and uh, only at the race itself I start seeing that uh, uh, not everyone just uh, mean person, yeah. that yeah. there are some nice yeah. people, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I start to communicate with people this and that, but you know, at that point um, uh, my computer job uh, start uh, dying off because computers became so cheap that nobody fixed them anymore. <laughs> it's true. Sure. And uh, I just recently uh, closed my um, computer repair shop. I had a computer repair shop yeah. with my okay. friend. We had to shut it down because, yeah, obvious reasons. And um, uh, you know, I was sitting at home. I had nothing to do. And uh, a year of uh, 2014, I was uh, every day going to Rockaway and I started from one lap around mm -hmm. Jamaica Bay and then I came yeah. up, up to five It's laps, a popular loop, so. kind of taking the bike path there, down right. the bridges, and right. down into Rockaway and back up. Yeah. Very nice ride. Yeah. And uh, I end up with uh, making uh, like uh, 80 or 100 uh, miles every second day. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was like, okay, maybe now I'm ready to you know, it's a big ride miles. with those yeah, guys, yeah. you know? Yeah. We got cut off here. Um, Alex apologized for talking too much. I, I, I let him talk, um, so it's also my fault. But 
um, we uh, it's a good conversation and that's why I also don't want to don't want to keep interrupting it because I think uh, it's good to show the complexities behind it's just we're not just bike riders right um, so it, he joined the team got invited um, by his friend Omar Villafane right and he the team a different name then but it morphed into the Verrazano bike shop team with the Verrazano team Verrazano team and that was then eventually you became the whatever you want to call yourself leader or captain or manager of the team um, and you still are right yeah um, I became a team captain because Omar uh, decided to uh, quit uh, running the team because it's uh, not it's demanding. easy to run team. Yeah, I think everybody who has ever run a team knows that it's it's very demanding right so uh, yeah it's time if, you want to, if you want to do it well right yeah. right and uh, you know people don't realize how much stuff you have to deal with like how much mm -hmm. time, uh, time, uh, time you need to spend to run the team. Yeah, it, it looks very simple from the side, but uh, communicating with everybody, right, right, like right. register with US Cycling, like all kinds of sick kits. Yeah, all that. And even uh, things Sponsors. like uh, if your teammate uh, did something uh, not right and stuff yeah. like this, you're gonna you hear have that. To get yeah. in yeah. and try to resolve the situation. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you're gonna because they're gonna come to you and it falls back on you because you are it's your team, right? Right. Um, and if you will not resolve it, then it will fall on the whole team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why um, uh, we end up without the team. And I was like, okay, guys, since Omer doesn't want to be a team captain anymore, I was like, okay, uh, looks like nobody else wants. Yeah. Okay, I, I will try to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I start running the team and. Uh, I started looking for uh, sponsors to look, uh, and um, we had the bicycle shop, mm -hmm. uh, we're done the bicycle shop as a sponsor before mm -hmm. uh, for Omer's uh, team, uh, which named uh, Fear Arms. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the owner said, Look, uh, I'm helping you guys, but I don't see that much feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, which I is want... a typical story, I think. Right, 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 yeah. right. The, the bike shop, bike team relationship is always. Right. It's really hard to make it a satisfactory one, I think, for both sides, right? Right. So I was like, okay, I'm going to name the team Verizano yeah. after your bicycle shop, yeah. so it will bring you more attention. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I couldn't go for anything else at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a reality, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And um, um, then. Um, uh, when I became a uh, team captain, I realized how much work it is because a uh, question to make sure that everyone has a kit, yeah. that all the kits fit right. Yeah. You have to buy on your own expense extra kits and yeah. keep them yeah. in yeah. case someone uh, went to size right? up, yeah. size, size size down yeah. and stuff like this. Yeah. Somebody's uh, short broke in the accident or something. All mm -hmm. sorts of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I think all team owners can, or team team owners, uh, <laughs> team the people who run teams or are involved in that are, are know that, right? It's right, like, right, it's like right. a job that really you need like four or five people to do, and if you can, ideally you can delegate. One guy does the kid, and, but anyway, so so you found all that out. You're still doing it though, right now? So. Yeah, um, you know uh, the main idea of uh, the team was uh, to uh, let talented uh, guys. Uh, uh, feeling of family mm -hmm. that when you join the team it's not uh, that you uh, join the military yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. more like you join the family and uh, if you even have some situation even not related to the team mm -hmm. uh, not related to the cycling mm -hmm. we still help each other yeah you know and uh, I've been telling uh, guys uh, we're all brothers here yeah. No matter what color of the skin and stuff like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why you see I have uh, about half of uh, uh, my members who uh, are colored, yeah, as yeah. they call it. Yeah, I think there's other terms now, but we, we don't want to get too much into the right, language. Right. People of color, I think, is the the current uh, term that's on vogue. But anyway, like the yes, and I was going to get to that too. Like your your team is, and I, that's my impression. It's really, it seems really easy for people to join because you have. You, I think you have turnover because people leave the sport. Every team has that, right? Or well, people go on to a better team, right? I think I've seen that with, for example, Bogdan, who rides for Foundation right, now, right, and, right. and people from personal other reasons. Anyway, that's normal, right? But but what I see is that you have um, you get people in the sport, and I think you're right. A lot 
more diverse maybe than other teams, um, which may reflect that you're in Brooklyn, because Brooklyn is maybe more diverse than Manhattan in some ways, right? But it may also be reflected by your approach, right? And I think that, that you have that, uh, when other people see, oh, there's a lot of people from whatever, the Caribbean or the other people, a lot of people who are Latino on there, then I will also go to that team, you know? Um, it's not just, um, yes, you're a white guy from, from <laughs> Belarus, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're both here sitting here, but, but you have managed to overcome that and you're not like, because often when that happens, then people, uh, it, one would expect that everybody in the team speaks Russian, right? But that's clearly not the case. I, think, right, I don't right, even right. know if anybody else speaks Russian on the team, but... Um, uh, I yeah. think we have more people who speak uh, Spanish than uh, uh, Russian on yeah. the team. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the thing is that um, um, I think that um, literally if someone uh, who is not white uh, comes uh, to races and stuff like this, uh, they have hard time to find a team, at least back then it was an issue. Uh, literally they had to choose uh, a major tailor or uh, uh, United mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, Team United, uh, United, uh, United, right, right, the right. Boris brothers. Uh, again, uh, hopefully I get to interview at least one of them soon. Uh, at some point, right. uh, they're from Guyana, right? Yeah. Right. But I think they have a strong uh, Guyana identity or Caribbean identity. Right, right, right. Uh, right. Uh, Horace is a, a president of uh, National uh, Association of uh, Racism. Still Association. is? Yeah, I thought, I thought I yeah. Think. But anyway, he was at, at least at some point. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't follow if yeah. he is uh, this year, but uh, at least for a few years mm -hmm. he was. So, um, and you know, um, they kind of uh, put uh, also some uh, uh, like the requirements uh, for people to join and stuff. They're a pretty ambitious team, right? They're, they're definitely uh, right. So, you know, that's why not everyone is welcome there. Yeah, I think different teams have different philosophies, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Major Taylor, uh, everyone is welcome, but they don't really race that much. At, at least they've been racing uh, uh, some of the years, but some of the years... It I think it depends season. on the members. Uh, you're right, I think that the, the majority of the members that I see and that I know and I've seen that uh, they're more into riding. Right, right. And not right. necessarily... There are some that race, but they're not like as a group right. race focused, right? They're not a race team, first of all. Right, right. They made a very nice ride uh, to Nayak. Yeah. I mean, uh, not, uh, to Montauk. Yeah, yeah, Montauk. Yeah, yeah. Montauk. The, uh, across, all the way across Long Island. It's right. Like, something it, it, it's yeah. it's very hard to organize but they did a great job you, know? you did it yeah okay. yeah I did it uh, on the bicycle once and uh, uh, last time I did it on the van yeah as a support, support. yeah it's great yeah um,